Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Lou. Did you know um, that... Hang on. Yeah? Did you know that um, one of the things that makes you look like a real idiot or even an asshole... I'm getting a clue. ...is when you text... When you're... Hang on. When you're talking to somebody... Huh. I would have never guessed that. All right. I think I'm done there. On our next episode, Little Ways, you're acting like an asshole and don't even know it. <laughs> that is on the men or, next Men Are So Smart. So remember that feeling that you used to get back in high school when you found out everybody was invited to Lou Gallagher's birthday blowout party except for you? Well, adults may get bigger, but they don't grow out of feeling sad about being left out. Unless everyone on your social media feed is in your invite list, hmm. avoid posting pictures of you and your friends at a major party. That's a bunch of crap. Who cares? Doesn't bother me. I don't care if I didn't get invited to a party. I probably wouldn't go anyway. Yeah, I mean, there'd be people there. I know you wouldn't. No. Yeah, you wouldn't go anyway, I so... Know. That well, doesn't. That makes no difference at all. All right, so we're talking today about little ways you're acting like a jerk, and you don't even know it. Yeah. All right. So here comes our list. That one doesn't bother me. All right. Next. This up. one though. Mm -hmm. This one does bother me. Okay. Forgetting to pick up your dog's poop. Oh, yeah. When you're walking your dog. When you're walking your dog in yeah. the neighborhood, uh, or wherever. Uh, there's nothing more infuriating than seeing a pile of animal waste desecrating your favorite public park, sidewalk, or worst of all, yeah. on your own lawn. Or your shoe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's astonishing how many pet owners pretend not to see Fido dump Just Keep Walking. Yeah. Um, make sure you always bring waste bags with you and pick up after your pooch. It's your responsibility. And I know, and, and, and I welcome that responsibility as a pet owner. But here's the thing. My dog, when I take her for a walk, she loves to poop everywhere. Yeah. Okay. And I bring two or three plastic bags. But the point is, <laughs> at some point, I'm carrying three bags of poop. What am I supposed to do with that? Carry it all the way home? So... And inevitably, so our, we just adopted a new German Shepherd, uh, a rescue, mm -hmm. and she's too shy to pee or poop in front of me for oh, whatever reason. That's too bad. She comes into the bathroom when I'm peeing or pooping. Yeah, but for, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, she's okay with that, but she doesn't like me to watch her pee or poop. So I don't have to worry about her. Buster, on the other hand, our rescue lab, he poops at least once. He could have just pooped in the backyard, and then I take him for a walk. He's going to poop, and typically it's at the furthest point of our walk. <laughs> yep. We could not be any further from home when so he poops. So you got to carry it all the way. Carry it all the way back. Yeah, yeah, and sometimes yeah. he poops twice. But I have a little thing on my leash that contain, that is a holder for plastic I've bags. I've seen that, It yeah. probably holds 100 of them or so. Mm -hmm. I have one of those someplace. Yeah, and I use it. Uh, and if, by the same token, if I'm walking and Buster poops, because sometimes he'll poop next to another dog's poop, like, I got the bag out already. What the hell? I'll, yeah. I'll pick it up. Because it is. It's disgusting. It's like repairing divots in a golf course. Bingo. You know, exactly you, like the that. The rule is you fix yours and one more. There you go. All right. Next up. Yep. Huh, this is interesting. Uh, in our list of little ways you're acting like a jerk and don't even know it, I had no idea. Um, <coughs> texting while talking to someone else. Who would do that? Hmm. We're all guilty of annoying texting habits, but there's one that takes the cake. You know what we mean. Talking to somebody, an alert notifies us of a text, so we take a quick glance and then type out a quick answer. Five seconds, no harm, no foul, right? Five seconds. Eh, not so much. Yeah. Taking your attention away from the person you're talking to at the moment, even just briefly, Shows them that they are not your priority right now and makes them feel like you're not listening. Ignore the siren call of phone alerts during an in-person conversation. You know, it is true. Uh, and it is. It's annoying. And I 
I see it all the time, especially if you go out to lunch, and I go out to lunch quite a bit now that I'm semi-retired. People, two people sitting at a table, and they're not talking to each other. I know. They're both looking at their phones. I know. Like, you could have just come alone because well, I'm I'm not sure what the what's going on there, what the dynamic is, but it's odd. You know, I don't go out for dinner all that much. My wife is such a great cook that, you know, I <laughs> I'd rather eat at home to be honest with you. Uh, but when we do, the last time, I remember the last time, as soon as we got there, we sat down, they served us some drinks, and my wife picked up her phone and was looking at it, and I go, what are you doing? Yeah. She goes, oh, I was thinking about checking in. I go, what's the rule on this? <laughs> when we go out... I need a ruling here. <laughs> uh-huh. Please, Judge Judy, and uh, yes, the server, please. Could you come here? Um, I, the rule is... You can take a picture of where we are or together right. or something like that, but that's it. Yep. There's nothing else more important than just having that dinner and, and being alone. Well, you know what? And then I'm not really a big fan of taking pictures of my food, but oh, no, I, no. I totally get that some people are, or they want to take a picture of their surroundings or whatever, but then wait till you get home to post it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, it's not that big a deal. Right. Oh, it does. You know, oh, they, that picture's an hour old. Right. Who gives a crap? Nobody. Nobody does. <laughs> uh, this next one, I see this all the time, and it really annoys me sometimes. It's leaving your grocery cart in the middle of the parking lot, or worse, leaving it in a parking spot. Yeah. Uh, because a lot of times, and I, I like to back into a spot. I have a, a big truck, for, for one, that I drive most of the time. And I like to back in so that I can easily pull out. Sure. Um, and it never fails the spot that I want, which is, I try to pick the shady spots. There's a, a shopping cart right in the middle of it. Yep. So it is, it's annoying. And this says it's been a long day. You're hot. You're tired. Yeah. The cart corral is so far away. We mm -hmm. get it. Mm -hmm. But there's still no excuse for leaving your cart in the parking lot, uh, or a par parking spot, especially when walking your cart back is as easy as way to sneak more steps into your day. Not only does it prevent the spot from being used by another equally tired and hot customer, but you're facing or forcing also a tired and hot bagger to come out and pick up after you. Don't be that guy. So rude. It is. And, and you know what it is? It's selfish. It's lazy. It's inconsiderate. Who the hell do you think you are that you're so freaking important yep. that you don't have time to put the cart back. Now, look, you know, there are exceptions to every rule, Ronnie. Right. If you're physically challenged to some capacity. I get it. And it doesn't have to necessarily be obvious. But, but yeah, sure. See, that's an exception. If you're a healthy individual and you can't put that cart back, who the hell do you think you are? You know, what I typically do, we go to Sam's Club and Costco once a week. And when we're out in the parking lot, I will pick up a parking, a shopping cart from the parking lot. Right. And take it into the store with me. That's what I and shop use with. use that one. I use that one. I, that's efficiency is what that is. Exactly. Yeah. So that's just how, that's how I roll. Next up, using big words you know other people won't understand. Oh, yeah, sometimes I think I might be guilty of this. <laughs> there's choosing the right word, and then there's showing off your word of the day skills. I hate those. <laughs> okay, that's ridiculous. <laughs> if you enjoy uh, penultimate, that's one of those Ooh, words. Oh, yes. If you enjoy language and delight in expressing yourself just so, it's totally fine. But if you're pulling out your $10 word just to look a little bit smarter than everybody else, you look like a buffoon. It's a fine line between eloquent elocu elocutionist and blowhard. <laughs> I can only say one, so I guess that tells me what one I am. Blowhard. Okay, so this was never more obvious. I'm not sure if anybody just the other day, the, the hearings for uh, Kavanaugh mm -hmm. were on the Supreme Court uh, justice nominee. And they were talking to his accuser, Dr. Ford. Right. And the, the man that was talking to her said, some evidence may corroborate your story 
and some may be, um, oh dang, what did he say? Exculpatory. Okay, some is exculpatory. So, in in law enforcement, we know because from going to court, I know what exculpatory evidence is. Exculpatory is evidence that can hurt you. So, even though you are, you're telling stories. So, in other words, he's telling her that they're going to interview witnesses, and some of these witnesses may give statements that help your case, and some of your witnesses may give evidence that hurt your case. She did not know what the word exculpatory meant. This is a, a professor at Palo Alto University. Uh, she also, she has a couple other degrees. I'm not sure how you could get that far through school. Well, culpa is Greek word, and mea culpa means my fault. Right. So uh, it's, a, it's obviously a word that means fault. There you go. So I'm not... Like I said, I'm not sure you, how you could get that far through school and not know what exculpatory is. Well, it's not a word that I'm familiar with, honestly, but at least Most I can figure should. it out. Right. Well, and is if he's telling you, it's either it either corroborates, which was his word exactly, or as uh, it, or it's exculpatory, then you know that it's the opposite yeah. of corroborating. Mm -hmm. So, uh, good point. Yeah. Whatever. Well, I, look at what the president said the other day um, when he was talking about uh, Kavanaugh being accused. Uh, he was he said the word acquisition instead of accusation. <laughs> Come on, dude. Come on. Hashtag buffoon. Hashtag. Oh my God. Do you remember way back in the day there was a comedian? I saw him on Johnny Carson all the time. I, his name escapes me. Uh, but he would intentionally, that was part of his gig, was he would intentionally use... The wrong word. The wrong word. Oh, I kind of remember that. Yes. Yeah. So hilarious. Oh, dang. It was very hilarious. I. That's one of my favorites. I'll have to look up his name. Uh, so this one, eh, I'm, I'm there and I'm not. We just went out to dinner last night. And I think our server's name was Colleen, and she just could not have been any sweeter or cuter or more helpful. But this one says, failing to learn your server's name. Yeah, okay, I'm down with this. Go ahead. And I will, you know, and, and typically I remember it in the moment, but like once you're gone, there's no re reason. Because if I remember too many things, I forget how to tie my shoes. I'm like a hard drive now that's pretty much reached its capacity. Mm -hmm. New information in, some old information has to be lost. That's weird, see, because I'm like a floppy disk. <laughs> that's what she said. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so most service staff wear name tags. This young lady wasn't last night. So you really have no excuse for not acknowledging them by name. It's especially important when you're asking for something. Uh, they're here to help you, sure, but they're a human being, not a robot. So last night, and my wife has this thing. It's a little odd. Uh, hopefully she doesn't watch this show. We have we have big forks and we have little forks mm -hmm. in our silverware drawer. Right. She does not, she won't, will not eat with a big fork. Will not. So last night they came by and they took her, after she had her salad, they took her little fork, which is your salad fork. Right. Well, now she doesn't have a little fork. Oh, she just has the big one. <laughs> now she just has a big fork. Huh. And so she asked, she said, you might think this is weird, but could I get my little fork back? <laughs> so. <laughs> Who am I to judge with the weird things that I have? I know. It's, and by, you know, on the scale of one to 10 weirdness, eh, it's only rates like a one or a two, but it is. It's just something that's a little bit odd. I'm not sure why she does it, but I guess she doesn't want to poke her tonsils or something <laughs> along fork. <laughs> Next up on our list of things that uh, you're doing, you're acting like a jerk and you don't even know it, letting the door slam shut behind you without looking. This just happened the other day at the AM, PM when I was getting gas. Um, I was coming out of, I just paid and I was going out to pump the gas. And as I opened the door, I saw a woman that was coming towards me and she had to be 25, 30 feet away. Right. But she, she, she gave me the eye contact. Oh. 
And so it was like, okay, well, if it were a dude, I might just let it go. But chivalry being what it is and all, I, I left, I held it. Yeah. And uh, here's one. Uh, they walk by and they, uh, yeah, thanks. Right. You know? Yeah. Like it's expected. Right. Are you the Queen of England? <laughs> yeah. Am I, did I just hold the door for the Queen of England? <laughs> no kidding. You know, I will, At an AMP. I'll do it to a certain extent. I know that we were at Red Lobster not that long ago, and I held the door for some people behind us. And before I know it, I've held it for like 20 people. Right. Yeah. You're, and then your wife. Yeah, she's is, way up there. And I'm like, I, I'm, yeah. I'll be there in a second. Hold on. See yeah. if I can get through this group of 50. <laughs> so I felt like I was the doorman at that point. I know. And sometimes that's a little bit extreme. Yeah. Okay, this one, oh, this is kind of what we were talking about before, a little bit. This goes back to cell phone. Using your speaker phone in public. Oh, my gosh. It just, first of all, how about a little privacy? Yeah. It, I, I feel bad for you. You're talking about things on your phone that right. you shouldn't be talking about I don't about know your, public. I don't need to know yeah. your IRS troubles. I really don't. We can't stress how important this one is. Talking loudly into your Bluetooth headset or putting your phone on speaker while shopping, riding the bus, or in a restaurant is a surefire way to make everyone around you hate you. Uh, no one wants to hear your private conversations. Uh, that is what texting's for. It's just, it is. It just seems... Uh, oh, and this one drives me crazy, too. Somebody's in the checkout line ahead of me or at a fast food place, and they're on their phone... And they're trying to, oh, hold on a second. And then the, this person keeps talking. No, wait a minute. I got to pay for this. Yeah. Or, like, I'm, I'm oh. at the store. Hold on one second. I'm so god dang important. Right. Come you on. Know? Oh, You please. look like a jerk. Yeah. You know what? And, and the fact that you don't even realize it proves even further that you're a jerk. Yeah. All right. So there you go. There's our list today of little ways... You're acting like a jerk, and you don't even know it, y y y because you're so... Hold on a second. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, Ronnie. Hello. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing something. Can I get... Oh. So, okay. Ronnie, we need yeah, to finish that. I got to go. We need to finish this. Right. I, I got to yeah. go. Ronnie, we need to finish this I, episode. I, I, I see it. <sighs> you get it. Sorry. Don't be that guy. Uh, below, we'd love to hear your comments. Or other suggestions of ways people act like a jerk without knowing it. That's what the comments are there for, yeah. too. They're there for you to participate. And you can either corroborate our stories, or they could be exculpatory. <laughs> Your comments could be either. <laughs> I'm Luke Gallagher. I'm Corvette Ronnie. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart. <laughs>